just want to know. I don't have to ask this question. I'm not curious. I don't have to wonder. I know beyond the shadow of any doubt, if it was not for people praying for me, I would not be here today. And I'm sure that one or two of you might have that same testimony. It was because of the prayers of others that got us where we're going. To God be all the glory. We welcome you to Union Oak Amy Zion Church, where indeed we believe we are moving ahead and standing on what God has said. Amen. At this time, let us have our call to worship. And I'm going to simply say that this indeed is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. At this time, let us have our invocation. Dear God in heaven, we want to thank you. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. My Lord. Yeah. We know, God, in the name of Jesus, that we can't do anything yeah. if you don't stamp your seal of approval on it. So, God, from every song that is sung on this morning, from every greeting that's given, yeah. from every word that is spoken, we ask, God, that you have your way today, God. Right now, Let your will be done like Amen. only you can. Amen. Lord, we love you and we give you all of the glory. In the blessed name of Jesus, we do pray. Let all of God's people say amen. 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 At this time, you will be treated with a wonderful selection by our very own Union Oak Mass Choir. Amen. To God be the glory.
never fallen down, ever, then their fall is lying. Amen. <laughs> but I'm just so thankful for Jesus Amen. that no matter what it is that we go through, he has a way of getting us on up and putting us back right on the right path. Amen. Amen. By way of teaching, you know, people will ask pastor questions. And I'll, I invite your questions. I'm serious. If you ever see me, some people don't like to ask in front of folks, you know. But ask me your questions. And there was a question that came up recently about the Apostles' Creed. Somebody said, Pastor, I was just wondering, when we get to the part where we say the Catholic Church, are we saying that we're Roman Catholic? And, and don't chuckle, you know. It, it, the reality is that's a question that many people have. Amen. And as we are preparing now for the reciting of our Apostles' Creed, for those who choose to stand, please feel free to do so. And those who will remain seated, that option is still available to you as well. But when we say Catholic in this sense, we're meaning Catholic as church universal. Amen. When we say the Holy Catholic Church, we're meaning the church universal, not the Roman Catholic Church. And I think it's important to know that distinction. I'm thankful that people ask questions. So again, if you ever have a question about anything that we're doing in our service, don't just go through the motions. Go ahead. Ask the question, and I will be happy. If I don't know the answer, I will find it. So at this time, let us consider where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now reverently and sincerely declare together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this it shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may have your seats at this time. Again, I want to thank everybody who participates with us for our morning glory prayer. Ten here at the church. Some of you are in person. Praise God. Some are on Zoom. Uh, and I say that because prayer is important. Amen. Prayer is important. As we are now in the season of, somebody help me out, what season is it? Lent. All right, amen, y'all on it. As we are now in Lent season, we know that some of the things that are characterized is reflection, mm -hmm. fasting, and prayer. Amen. And so at this time, as we go before the Lord, I invite you to pray with expectation. We talked about that Wednesday night. When we pray, we don't want to pray just for the sake of praying or going through the motions or thinking that we're doing it just to say we're doing it. But we want to make sure that when we are praying, we are indeed praying and expecting God to move. Amen. If you need healing, when you pray, you believe that God will heal. Amen. If you need deliverance, you pray knowing that God will deliver. Yes, sir. You got a situation at the house. Matter of fact, in Sunday school, we talked about three. Uh -huh. First one was the brother who was addicted. If he's going to pray, he's got to believe that God can break those chains. Amen. Then we had the sister who was lonely. If she's going to pray, she's got to believe that God is a comfort. Amen. Then finally, we had the family who had some children that were giving them some challenges. If they're going to pray, they got to believe that God can restore a relationship. Amen. So I encourage you, even on this morning, as we pray, as we pray, pray with the heart of expectation knowing that either God is going to change the situation or God's going to change us. Amen. Amen. Dear God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We come before you right now. We ask, oh Lord God, that you look upon every situation. Look upon every community, every home. And God, we want to begin this prayer by saying thank you. There have been many prayers that have already gone forth. Prayers for healing, prayers for safety, God, prayers for regulation, and you've done that. We can't be so caught up in asking from you, God, that we don't take time to say thank you. Amen. Thank you, God. Almighty God, we ask in the name of Jesus that truly you indeed let your will be done. God, we also reminded that you have told us 
that if we're going to ask for, for your forgiveness, we must also be willing to forgive others. Sometimes, God, that seems to be a challenging thing, so we ask, God, that you deal with us, yes. deal with our hearts, God. Thank you, God. That we would be willing to forgive and love Thank in the way that you call. God, we thank you for down through the years you've been mighty good to us. God, we know you sit high, God, and you look low, God, but at the end of the day, Lord, we're just thankful to be counted amongst your children. God, use us for your glory. We want to be used, God, that somebody will be drawn to Christ from something that is said or done. Lord, help us to not just read the word, God, but live this word. And even in this Lenten season, God, let us turn from things that will get in the way of our relationship with you. Thank you for the peace that comes from you, God. There are, there are times we are calling out, but we know, Lord, that you have a way that's mighty sweet. Thank you, God, for what you are doing in this place and even in the community, God. There are homes and individuals who feel they have no one to pray for them. We take a moment to pray for them right now. And on this first Sunday, this Sunday, where we recognize the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Yes. Help us to God have a repentant heart yes. that we may move forward in the spirit of Christian love and fellowship. These things we ask in the blessed and mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. turn this portion into the hands of our audiovisual team for the first portion of this morning's announcements. Amen. Good morning, Union Oak. Good morning. Starting with our thought for the week. No matter how educated, talented, rich, or cool you believe you are, how you treat people ultimately tells all integrity is everything. How about that? These are your announcements for this week. The Lay Council would like to remind everyone about your yearly dues. Life member dues are $125. Regular dues are $5 each year. Our Lay Academy will be Tuesday, March 15th at 7 p.m. 
You may pick up your church guide after morning service. Please allow one per household. The Bureau of Supply for the WHOMS on the district is asking for all members to collect and donate their empty medicine bottles for a project. Please have all donations in by May 14th. There will be a plastic tub in the fellowship hall for collecting. Some of you probably saw that this morning as you entered. The acolyte schedule is as placed for the, the uh, Sundays that I indicated. I will not read the names of those uh, there, as you can see for yourself. Quarterly conference will be held <coughs> will be held on Tuesday, March the 8th at 6.30 p.m. Please turn, on all, turn in all reports today. A mass meeting will be held on Saturday at 10 a.m. at Freedom Chapel. Although there will not be a formal candlelight service today, the missionary department is asking all members to please pay $30. This effort is to pay our assessment for the year. And if you look on the flyer, this has been advertised for the last couple of weeks now pertaining to uh, Sister Ashley with the Buzz meeting uh, that is to be held on the, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and read. The Buzz of Promise lesson will be held every fourth Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. via Zoom. And the meeting in the note is, is indicated there. The first lesson will be held via Zoom March 22nd at 6 p.m. This is following the Buzz of Promise meet and greet at Elizabeth Pisa on March the 19th at 2 p.m. Any children five to 12 years of age may attend the lessons. I can't wait to see you all for our first meeting and greet and can't wait to begin working with our buzz, Sister Ashley McKinney. And you see the note on the flyer there. Amen. Anyone in need of a 2022 calendars, they are now available in the fellowship hall. And from what I understand, there's plenty, but please be responsible when uh, picking them up. These are your announcements. I'll turn it back over to the pastor. Amen. I like how Brother Allen put that, be responsible. I, I like that. For those that missed it, that means if you one person, don't take 18 of them. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we want to make sure um, that everybody who wants one is able to get one. Um, I... I wanted to get this in and I realized I did not hit send. Anybody ever started an email and you don't hit send? And you think, oh, I thought I typed it up. But we do have a special flyer. It'll be in the bulletin on next week. Our bunny hop, the flyer looks great. I like it because it reminds me of Bugs Bunny. I don't know how many of y'all remember him. It said we made it in? Amen. It's in there? All right. Cool. Very good. Somebody have a back then. Very good. Uh, but we do want to be a blessing to our children and the community. That's the other thing. And that's, that's the reason I'm saying it now. When we have stuff here at Union Oak, yes, we want to invite Union Oak. Tell your neighbors. Tell your friends. We want to make sure anytime we're doing something here, whether it's uh, for the fam, whether it's events like the bunny hop or Christmas, whether it's our regular Wednesday evening. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and say, whether it's morning worship. Amen. We want to be in the habit of letting people know that our doors are open, our Zoom lines are open, and that ministry is taking place here at the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. I won't reiterate the Quali Conference, uh, but just please, if you are a leader, please be here. Um, if you have to be online, that option is available to you. Um, I did want to make sure to let everybody know, um, if you are not able to physically be here, the Zoom line will be sent. However, it is not our normal Union Oak Zoom. It is a special quarterly conference Zoom sent by the elder, and I'll make sure that gets distributed out. If you need it and somehow miss it, please text or call me directly, and I can get it to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, at this time, I believe we do have a special presentation. We have a special presentation at this time. Uh, and Ms. McGugan, you are our <coughs> Christian Education Department, and I'm going to ask if you will come up and facilitate that, please, at this time. She's going to get me. I put her on the spot, amen. <laughs> but I think she's the best person uh, for the job. And as she's doing that, 
um, will not be very long as we're transitioning to prepare for our communion uh, for, for the sick and the shut-in. We are just having a very, very short debrief with the deaconess right in the fellowship hall for those who are able to make it. Um, I have no new information. We're just going to debrief on what was discussed at Tuesday's meeting. So for the deaconess who are able to, you can just meet us. And for those who are traveling with us to commune the sick and shut-in, we'll be leaving immediately from there out to the community. Thank you. Uh, good morning, church. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I was talking to a friend, and they actually are here, you know, and they come visit with us, and they see some of the things that we want to do for the community and for the church. And they said, well, you know, I want to do something so that it will help the church. And can I do that? I asked the pastor if he would, would it be okay? So the young man said that he would come this morning. He said he loved our pastor. He wanted to video our service. And he also wanted to do something extra special for us. So I'm going to ask at this time if he would come, Brother Terry McMillan, mm -hmm. if he would come in his own way. He has a presentation that he would like to make. Can I come to the center? You got a mic? <laughs> uh, good morning. Um, well, I tried to make it short because starting April, my schedule is booked up all the way to December. So now I'm trying to, to like make my round to some really good church. Now I'm going to say this, and I don't mean any harm to any other church that I've been to. But uh, when I came to this church, the Chippewa lady, and the, the great Reverend GQ, I call him. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what GQ is, it means Gentleman Quarters. All right. It's a magazine strictly for men, it's very well dressed, very well groomed. So I met him at, um, I don't remember the church, I met so many churches. He was so friendly to me, then I came here, he gave me a, such a warm heart. And although he shared this, one of his Carolina kids with me. <laughs> I told him, got, I, I like to joke around a lot. I told him he got, he got to take him in the closet and lay hands on him and pray for him. <laughs> but uh, anyway, can I get the chairman of the trustee board? And I, oh, I met his wife yesterday. I was, up in Santa doing a project. Mm -hmm. and there she was. <laughs> okay. Um, like I said, I'm making my rounds, and I'm not a rich man, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, I've been very well blessed. So yeah. I have several churches to go to. And this is this is the first church. Mm -hmm. I have some other churches to go to too. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd like to present uh, the pastor and, and the chairman of the trustee board a check for $200 for the Christian Education Department. Amen. And, Amen. and again, uh, I would like to say thanks for the very warm welcome I got. The first time I came through that door, I felt welcome. Okay. Now, again, I have to be me. Some places I went, I haven't felt welcome. So. <laughs> just, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Okay. And thank you so very much. Yes, I appreciate you, my friend. <laughs> One thing about it, I appreciate Brother Terry, because here's the reality. People don't got to do nice stuff for you. People, he didn't have to do that. Y'all see what I'm saying? We were talking recently um, about how entitlement has really stirred our country. It's almost like, it, well, you're just supposed to do that for me. I tell my students in the school system, sometimes they say, oh, by the way, did you thank your mama for breakfast this morning? For breakfast? Why am I supposed to thank my mama for breakfast? No problem. I'm going to call her and tell her to hold off feeding you for about four days. You're going to be thanking her sooner or later. And I say that because I think it's important that we remember. So again, my brother, thank you so much. Know that these doors are always open. If you ever want to stop on by the big oak, we are here for you, my friend. Amen. Um, 
That's all right. Y'all come on, give God praise. That's good. That's good. So with this time, we're going to get ready to turn into the hands of our stewards and ushers as we prepare for our tithes and offerings. As you know, today is our Sunday to recognize the sacrament of Holy Communion. And so what will take place is our very fine choir will give us a musical selection for the purpose of the offering. And immediately following the offering, we're going to go into the Word of God. Amen. And after that, we will recognize the sacrament of the Lord's Supper Amen. in that order. That sounds good, Father. Say that. Amen. That sounds great.
Amen. Amen. Miss Marie, Brother Hurley, thank you all so much for your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Y'all know these masks ain't as easy to take off as the other ones. <laughs> my head kind of big. I remember being one of the few kids in school that had the hat that said one size fits all. They looked at me and said, uh-uh. <laughs> that ain't going to work. Um, but truly, we thank God for what he is doing in the lives of his people. Amen. So at this time, let's just look to the Lord. Thank you, God, right now for your presence that is with us. Thank you, God, for keeping us. Thank you, God, for sustaining us. We love you, Lord, and we give you all the glory. It is in the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. Certainly, I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to give God the glory. Um, as I was sharing with Sunday School this morning, I had every thought that we would find ourselves in the emergency room. Because I had an episode, sometimes I had severe blood pressure spikes, and today was one of them. I knew it was coming, about four something. Uh, my head was hurting last night, and I'd like to think Reverend Benson was, well, Lord, maybe if I just lay back down, I'll be all right. I got up this morning, could not stand. Walked around a little bit and said, well, maybe if I get something to eat, maybe that'll do it. Well, y'all know, those who have a chance to know me, no pastor likes to work out. And I like to lift heavy weights. I couldn't lift that bowl. Greg, the bowl was, the bowl wasn't but that big. I went to get, I couldn't get, man. And so I knew what was going on in my body because I've experienced it. And all of a sudden, I started sweating. And my, my skin was cold as a refrigerator. And all I could start doing was calling on the name of Jesus. I say that to say this to you, my friends. Saints of God, trust me. When I say we need to have a relationship, yes, Lord. I mean the word we. I don't want y'all to think that I'm up here telling you something that I don't practice myself. But I know that God is a sustainer and that God is a healer. So I found myself wanting to go and I was so messed up by the point I got to the kitchen, I couldn't even make it from the table back to the room. I had to wait and I had to lean on the counter. And I was telling them my legs felt like some spaghetti strings that was cooked up real good. And finally, I was able to get back and lay down. And I said, I got to get up. I've got to get ready. I got to start getting stuff in order. And I said, but I need prayer. And that's why it's good to have somebody to pray for you. I looked over my wife. She was still half asleep. But I tell you what she knew how to do. She knew how to pray and call on the name of and so I stand before you now letting you know that it could have been another way. But God, God saw fit that he would allow me to be here this morning before you. And I give God praise. I give God the glory. And I give him all the honor. So I, I think to myself, as a matter of fact, and I, I'm so thankful for the lesson this morning. I could not have timed it better. God has a way of timing things. Yes, sir. So the Sunday school lesson talked about the liberating power of God. Y'all remember that for those who were made it. And so I started thinking to myself, I said, you know, there's something to be said about power. And so this morning's scripture lesson will be coming from 2 Timothy chapter 3. Okay. It's going to be in chapter 3, 2 Timothy. When you really... Look at what's going on in the world. Folks in the Bible who was right, they must have knew something about what they were talking about. They didn't have CNN. They didn't have MSNBC. They didn't have that other news station. Uh, what do they call it? Oh, yes. Fox News. I got my feelings about that, but we're going to stay in the word. Amen. Second Timothy. <laughs> Chapter 3. Somebody else said they feel the same way. <laughs> Chapter 3, verse 1 begins, You must understand this, that in the last days, distressing times will come. I could stop right there. And I could probably get a few amens. Amen. For people will be lovers of themselves, mm, lovers of money, 
boasters. That means they're always bragging. Right. Arrogant. Mm -hmm. Abusive. Mm -hmm. Understand, abuse is more than physical. Let me just say that. Mm -hmm. Verbal abuse is abuse mm -hmm. as well. Lord have mercy. All the children in the house say amen. amen. Next line says disobedient to their parents. I'm so glad that that's not an issue here at Union Oak. Amen. Ungrateful, unholy, inhuman, slanderers, brutes, people who hate what is good, People who will betray you. In other words, false face, two face. They used to call them the backstab. Reckless, swollen with conceit. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Holding to the outward form of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life. Christ Jesus will be persecuted. <laughs> Wicked people and imposters will go from bad to worse, mm -hmm. deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continuing what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, how from childhood, that's why it's important to teach our children, how from childhood you have known the sacred rites that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> to God be the glory. I want to just take a few moments at this time to deal with the topic, stay connected to the power. Amen. Stay connected to the power. Amen. God, have your way on this morning. I thank you for this ready and waiting congregation. Oh God, let a word go forth that will make a difference, God. Oh God, let something be said that will prepare your folks for what lies ahead. Oh my God. God, we don't want to just preach a good word, but a word that will indeed do some good. Yes. Thank you, God, for your presence that is here. For God, apart from your presence, we can do nothing. No. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh God, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Anybody got a cell phone? Any, anybody at the church just own a cell phone at the house? Maybe you don't even use it, but you got it. Anybody? Y'all yeah. yeah. can nod your head. It's all right. You, it, you, you still say it if you own a cell phone. It's all right. Yeah. So one morning, you know, I'm getting ready to get up, rushing for work. Y'all probably been there too. Maybe not, but I was trying to get to work on time. And I grabbed my phone. And I said, oh, yeah, because, you know, I like to call first lady every day on my lunch break. That's the favorite part of my work day. I get to call her on my lunch break, and we just talk. And so I got to make sure my phone is charged. I don't play that. I got to hear her voice. If I hear her voice, I'm good. If she has a meeting, I don't get to talk to her. It's a rough day for me. So I got ready to go. I knew my phone had been plugged up all night long. And so because the phone had been plugged up all night long, then surely it was ready for the day. Uh -huh. I get the work all was well. My, my son rode with me. We listened to our proverbs in the car. Then we get the work and I look at my phone and I glance at it. Uh -huh. I said, that don't look right. <laughs> the bar is supposed to be here. Right. But the bar is right here. Something uh -huh. ain't right. But I said, no, I just probably looked at it wrong. Uh -huh. Surely I'm good to go. Uh -huh. So I go through the day and Lo and behold, I get to call my little sweetheart, and we got to talk, and we got to chit-chat, and I got to finish talking to her, getting ready to come back into the building. But I looked down, mm -hmm. and I noticed something. I noticed that my bar, which is normally green around this time, right. was red. Yeah. Matter of fact, I can't even call it a bar. It was a slipper. Yeah. It was a line. Yeah. Yeah. I said, oh, man, what in the world? So I pulled up my phone, I text Makita, and I say, sweetheart, my phone about to die. I don't know what's up. Maybe the battery, y'all know how we do, maybe the battery ain't working. Uh -huh. But if you need me, call the school. Right. Okay? And it was puzzling. And I finally got home, I said, what in the world? I kept checking the phone, uh -huh. I tapped it, I said, is something wrong? I was about to call Verizon. Uh -huh. You know how we do. 
Yeah. I go to the room though, uh -huh. and I get my charger, and I said the charger works. It looks good. It's not frayed. It's not broken. <laughs> but it was sitting on the floor oh, my like God. this <laughs> the whole night. This fella was plugged into the wall, and the cord was on the floor. So yeah. The phone, for those on Zoom, y'all excuse me. <laughs> there we go. There we go. The phone was plugged in the whole time, but it was not connected to a power source. The scripture talks about having the form of godliness, but denying the power. And I feel like sometimes the challenge that we have as believers. We look like we're charged, right. but we're not connected to the power. We have to stay connected to the power. Here, Paul, at the close of chapter 2, he begins to speak to Timothy about being a workman approved by God. Paul is giving instructions. He's training. He's teaching. He's making sure that the words that he's saying resonate. He attempts not to use big, fancy language, and he tries to use words that the one who's listening to him can understand. Now, I don't know, maybe Paul just had an insight into what's going on in 2022. Because I know he was speaking of his time period, but last I checked, people who love themselves, check. Lovers of money, check. Arrogant, check. Ungrateful, check. Disobedient to parents, I work in the school system. Check, check, and check. Lovers of pleasure rather than God, check. Having an outward form of godliness, but denying its power. Where is my spray paint? Check. Because it's so easy to say the right thing, to look the right thing, to dress the right way, to do the whole church thing. I was telling Makita on yesterday, people aren't looking for church on Broadway. People are not looking for us to perform what it looks like to be Christian. No, we need to live the Christian life that God has called us to live. Muhammad Gandhi, for those who are familiar with him, he never professed to be Christian, yet his ways and peaceful stance mirrored much of the things that Jesus taught. That is why it is not unheard of to hear Christians also respect Muhammad Gandhi for his teachings. Okay? He was never in contrast. And one day someone asked him an interesting question. They asked him his perspective on Christianity. Gandhi replied something that should really open our eyes and make us take a long look in the mirror. He said that he did not have an issue with the teachings of Jesus. As a matter of fact, he admired and respected the teachings of Jesus. He says in reality, he is a big fan of the teachings and doctrines of Christianity. Mm -hmm. His issue is the practice or more particularly, those who practice. All right. <laughs> There's something to be said about the fact that people are watching us, y'all. Amen. People are watching us, and they're wanting to see are we practicing what we preach. Amen. See, the fact of the matter is most people will acknowledge Christian doctrine and Christian principles are a good thing. I can tell you many businesses and organizations won't mind when somebody says a prayer, especially if it's for the good of the business. Uh -huh. <laughs> They'll invite somebody to bless food. Yeah. But where people tend to struggle <laughs> is when they say, yeah, I don't get it. Those folks profess one thing and they do something else. All right. For my young folks in the house, uh -huh. have you ever had a friend on the playground or in the yard and they, they're the ones, pick me, pick me, put me on the Put me on your team, select me for the basketball game, and you're thinking, I don't know. You know, you know nowadays, they don't really pick anymore for, for social emotional help, but back in my day, they would get two captains, and they would pick who they want on the team. Right. And so they would say, man, pick me. I remember being in school, and I remember this guy. He can run. He can talk more in a little bit. He can out-talk me, if you can believe that. And so he was up there talking about, pick me, pick me. 
Pick me for the squad. I'm the best. And I watched him. And my homeboy finally got to the playground. And he looked, he's all right. I'm not going to call his name just in case he tuned in on Zoom. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but he said, come on, I'll put you on my team. Why he do that? He couldn't shoot the ball. He kept losing it. He couldn't dribble the ball. Mommy, they, he couldn't do nothing. He talked a good game, though. So finally, after the game, he looked at him and said, man, what happened? You told me you was the best. He said, man, I must be having an off day, man. Just, he just ain't working. He said, but don't worry, man. Let me get the ball again. Keep in mind, we're playing basketball. He said, man, don't worry. Let me get the ball again, baby. I'm going to score a touchdown for you. Go ahead. <laughs> Take a second. Take a second. Take a second. I'm going to score a touchdown for you. Okay. So we realize now, despite all of this, this did not match up with the reality. And I'm curious, how often do we find ourselves in a situation to where we talk about how saved we are? We talk about being sanctified, five baptized, and Holy Ghost filled. But when people are needing to get a prayer through, when people are coming to you, do they feel like they can go to you because you're going to pray about it? Or do they just say, I'm good, I'm fine, no, everything is well, because they feel like the moment you get a bone, you're going to tote it somewhere. People are looking for reality, and the only way we can put reality to our faith is if we stay connected to the power which is Jesus. I told you guys I got up that morning and I needed my phone. And it was so fortunate that I didn't miss any important calls wow. and I was able to get home in enough time to charge. But what if an emergency happened? My what God. if, Kara, I needed to call somebody? What if, Mr. Roscoe, I found myself needing to contact somebody about my kids? Yeah. When the emergency happened, it didn't matter how much it looked like it was connected. I would have needed to be connected. Don't miss what I'm saying this morning. There are going to be times in life when looking Christian just won't do. It doesn't matter what hat you wear, what suit you got. You can be stood from the floor up, but there are times when we need the power of Jesus to get us home. This morning, I had my robe in the closet. I had my suit on the bed. I had my collared shirt in there. None of those things mattered when I'm laid out in cold sweat. It took the power of Jesus. At that moment, my body didn't care if I was the pastor of the church. My body didn't care what seminary I was in. My body doesn't care about how many sermons I preached. At this point, the only thing that mattered was my connection to the Almighty God. So we've got to monitor and we've got to be careful because the reality is, y'all, it is easy, not just possible, but easy to appear holy and not be holy. I have found it a reality. Please know I'm not picking. I, I don't use the pulpit to pick or throw stones at all, but I want to paint a picture if you would allow me. And I remember spending years in a, in a church congregation to where the ideal of holiness was women don't wear pants. Women don't wear makeup. Some of y'all have probably heard of that. Yes. Brothers, you wear your suits the whole time. And I found myself watching and observing and during that time period, that season of life, the ideal of holiness was based upon external appearance. Yes. And we do similar things too. We do because you know, I'm not picking out. I hope nobody has said that here. But in my time of working with young people, I've had people say something about a young person. If they come to church and their hair is purple or green, can they pray the Lord in peace? Amen. Yeah. I've had some people come to church and they're in a shirt and jeans. Can they pray the Lord in peace? Y'all see what I'm saying? I've had times when brothers and sisters, and here's what pastor is saying, sometimes we'll get so modern, we'll say, oh, that's right, let those young people do that. No, 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 let anybody do that. 
We get so caught up. On yesterday, I had a debate with a colleague about the hymns of a church. And I love the hymns of the church. I grew up on the hymns, and I believe that they are indeed important. But he started talking about how important the hymns are and not like that other stuff that they're singing today. So I simply challenged him by saying, well, what is it that makes you feel that way? And he started telling me about the sacredness of the hymns and the importance of the hymns. And perhaps some of you feel that way. And I said, well, my brother, and I was just asking, I said, well, what about songs like Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior? Pass me not, O Gentle Savior. One of my personal favorites. I say, but the theology is in question. For if God has told us he would never leave us nor forsake us, what is the need to ask God not to pass us by? He said, well, that is true, but can we perhaps consider the time and place when the artist was preparing the song. Mm. The author of the song was going through some things in her life at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was simply saying, Lord, don't pass me by. Mm -hmm. I said, my brother, that's good. That's real good. I said, so what you're saying to me is that the lyrics are given credence based upon what the artist was going through at the time. Y'all stay with me. Watch this. I say, if that's an absolute fact, then when some songs are written today in the modern era, mm -hmm. Could we not also consider that God is still speaking to people today? Amen. That people today are going through, and it's what they're going through today, which births the lyrics to our more modern songs. And on that end, whether it's a hymn from the 40s or something that just came out last week on XM Kirk Franklin's Gospel Station, if the song has lyrics that are connected to the power of God, allow it to minister to your spirit. I give that example because look at how easy it is to place holiness on something just because it's our preference. See, I said it. Sometimes we call things sacred when it's simply our preference. It's what we like and what we enjoy. And one of my colleagues from New York, she said, yeah, I'm glad they called me David in class. I'm glad David said that because I was going to bring up the point, even the hymns that we look at, they were oftentimes written to the melodic melodies and musical genres of the time period. Not too different than what's going on today. And so when I say we can easily allow things to look holy and not be holy, Amen. we can treat ourselves the same way we treat the hymns. Amen. All we got to do is dress right, say amen at the right time, wave our hand at the right time, holler at the right time, go to the right services, and then go home and raise all the hell we want because we feel like as long as I did what I had to do, that's enough. But baby, if you do that, you'll find yourself right in this court. You'll find yourself needing power, realizing that you haven't been connected, and you'll say, God, what's wrong? And we'll find ourselves saying, I have the form of godliness and denying the power. Lest I wait your patience too much longer, I want to remind you that Paul spoke of the fact that indeed for those who want to live godly, this is verse 12, they will be persecuted. This is another reason why staying connected to the power is so vitally important. If you are honestly going to live this Christian life, get ready for challenge. Yes. If anybody has told you that this is an easy walk, you go back to them and say, baby, why you lie to me? Because the walk of a Christian is not an easy walk. It's not a smooth road. There will be bumps and bruises along the way. And it is when we stay connected to Jesus is when we are able to stand in the midst of those challenges. This is why it does no good to front. This is why you'll find yourself in the same position like my buddy from elementary school who did a lot of talking and when called upon was unable to deliver. Some of us front so good when a person finally calls us and says, this is what I'm going through. I need you to pray for me. All we're able to say is God is great. God is good. Lord, thank you for this food. It does us 
us no good to front and fake. We must be honest about this thing because there is work to be done. God did not call us to just sit on the sidelines. And here in this Lenten season, it is a time for us to be honest now. That's, listen, let me say this to you. I think this is important. You all may have noticed, Union Oak, that I have not instituted a church fast, nor have I asked anyone what they're doing. And that is because fasting, in my opinion, based upon my interpretation of the word of God, is between you and the Lord. I have nothing against people who are saying, hey, we're all doing the Daniel fast. Praise the Lord. Nothing wrong with that. I have nothing against people who say, hey, my church is doing a media fast. That's fine. Praise the Lord. But if I'm doing something purely because somebody else is doing it, I'm no longer really doing a fast. I'm doing a fast. And God did not call us to fast because it's trendy or because it gets me likes on social media. But God called me to fast so that I can put aside everything that is on me that's keeping me from being like him. And I can then come into a personal connection with the power. So this Lenten season, I encourage you, as God is dealing with you, stay connected to the power. Allow God to speak to your heart and to speak to your spirit so that whatever it is that you give up, it will be something that you replace with time. I want to say this to you. It seems very simple. It really makes a lot of common sense. But we'll miss it if you're not careful, Brother Love. I wasn't connected, so my phone started dying. All right. Makes sense, right? I got home. I plugged the thing back up. I laughed at myself, of course. And I knew that I was expecting a call from my mother. So my phone was almost dead. Don't miss where I'm going. I simply took the phone mm. and I plugged it up. Yes. Y'all missed it. Go it's ahead. okay. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> Start over. Go ahead. So I thought the phone was connected. Uh -huh. It was not connected. So as a result of being away from the power, yes. the phone lost charge. Right. It was almost dead. Yes. Oh my. I got home and realized the mistake, and I plugged it up. All right. And I plugged up the phone. Amen. We almost there. We almost there. Let's try one more time. So I had the connector. The power source never had anything wrong with it. The wire, ha, ha, nothing was wrong with the wire. Some of y'all are right now thinking something's wrong with you. Ha. The, the enemy has you guilty. Ha, ha. There was nothing wrong with the wire. The problem was the wire wasn't connected. And as a result of this very fine wire being disconnected from this sufficient power source, the phone was not able to get what it needed. But when I got home and I realized that some of us, once we come to the realization of where our problem is, we come running back to more. And once I got reconnected, then the power was back on. I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what's going on in your life. But I encourage you, even if you found yourself disconnected, all you gotta do is rehook up to the power source.
I hear people say all kinds of things about the church. Let's not put down the church. Let's just remember that maybe the church just needs a holy hookup and a repentant reconnection. And I believe in my heart, just as the word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, God will heal us. I believe God will do this that. Standing all over the building all this morning, that is where we are, y'all. We are walking a walk. We cannot walk this walk on our own. And it's not enough to look connected. Because if all we do is look connected, we'll be like that phone almost was, an expensive brick that can't do nothing. And so on this morning, my first appeal is those who perhaps, maybe you've been in church. Maybe you have the, the, the look and the feel, but you've never given your life to Christ. I don't want anybody to leave here without giving their life to Christ because they did not have the opportunity. Every person has to make their own choice. I was actually talking to a friend of mine, a minister, a pastor last night, and I said, everybody still has to make a choice. That's why I don't believe in trying to scare people to the altar. Sometimes we just want to brag about how many people we had, and so we say whatever it takes just to get them to come up here and don't think any more of it. But I know that Jesus was not concerned with making big numbers. He was concerned with making disciples. And so perhaps something that you've heard in Sunday school, something that you've heard from the ministry through song, perhaps something that was spoken up in the preached word. Maybe you want to give your life to Christ. The doors of the church are open. Where you gonna run? For those who are online, where you gonna run? You don't have to be in a building to get saved. Maybe you're at home saying, I'll wait till I get to church. Tomorrow's not promised. You can get saved right from your living room. Raise your hand, raise your chat. And we will have that prayer with you on this morning. Thank you, Lord. Maybe there's somebody who has looked this ministry over. And they said, you know what, there's something about this place that I like. I like visiting. I like how it makes me feel. And I want to make this my church. If that's you, you when you come on this run to the rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, my last appeal. There may be someone who says, I've been going through the motions. But the this day will cry. I don't want to just look church. I want to be church. More specifically, Ain't I want to no connect. We invite you to come for special prayer at this time if that is your desire. Certainly you are welcome to remain at your seats, but if you desire to come, a special prayer and help, you may come at this time.
There's going to be those that say, I needed this and God gave. And there's going to be those, God, that say, I prayed this this week. But when God dealt with me, my prayers changed. God, we thank you for the life-sustaining power that is your son, Jesus. I pray, God, for everyone who is trying to walk this Christian journey, that you help them to walk and live the way you intend. Dear God, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise on this morning. And as we prepare, God, to celebrate this holy and sacred sacrament, let us all take an internal look that we may truly repent and heartily be sorrowful for our sins, that we may move forward living for you. These and all of the blessings we ask in the name of Jesus, we do pray. Let all of the saints of God say, Amen. 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 Y'all give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. If you would continue singing the beautiful selection as our deaconess now come to help prepare for Holy Communion. And as you are sitting, remember it's not a buffet, it's not even a routine, it's not even a routine, but this is a moment we go evaluation yes, yes, yes. on where we are to God in the glory. children out there and for those who might wonder what it means by propitiation we simply mean that there is nothing that we can do we can't do enough good deeds to get into heaven we can't live right enough we can't get ourselves together but when we say propitiation that lets us know that everything that we need to come in right relationship is summed up in Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and regret our many sins and wickedness, which we from time to time have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, justly provoking your wrath and indignation against us. We truly repent and are sorry for our misdoings, we are saddened when we remember them. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all who with repentance and true faith turn to you. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all of our sins. Bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Almighty God, 
to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse our thoughts and hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do not presume to come to this, your holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your many and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as the gather of the crumbs from under your table. But you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so that to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, we may live and grow thereby, that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. Together. It's very meet and right, bound in duty, that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth full of thy glory, glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for the remission of our sins, we now take and we eat, and as we do so, we do so in remembrance of Jesus. Likewise, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for the remembrance of our sins, we take and drink, knowing that Christ's blood was shed for us. Amen. As we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. Amen. 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 At this time, if we could have the choir prepare some appropriate communion selection. And at this time, we ask that the congregation be led by the leading of our ushers as we now together prepare to take the Lord's Supper.
Savior Jesus Christ, which was given for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. This time, take and eat, remembering that Jesus died for you. Take it into your heart with faith and thanksgiving. Likewise, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was indeed shed for you. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of him. Amen. Determined as these retire, let others come. This time we will commune our deaconess. Amen. Amen. We thank God for this very sacred and consecrated office in the church. Someone might wonder even what does it mean by consecrated? We were told, taught in the Acolyte training a long time ago, set apart for God's service. Amen. 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 Thank God to have Mother Evans in the house on today. Amen. I know we've been praying, and I'm a firm believer that when we pray, when God moves, we should praise as Amen. hard as we pray. Amen. 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 And so at this time, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for your sins and mine, take and eat knowing that Christ died for you. Yes. Likewise, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross, take and drink. Thank you, God. Knowing that that precious blood was shed for the remission of our sins. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, ma'am. Afterwards, one time, the disciples asked Jesus, Master, teach us how to pray. And it was through that request that we have what has become known as the Lord's Prayer. So at this time, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you. We give thanks for your great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, 
O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. You who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. You who takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You who sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For you only are holy, you only are the Lord, you only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 We do indeed thank God for his grace in this moment of reflection. Amen. Amen. Holy Communion. As we prepare to leave this place, but never in the presence of God, I ask that you continue to keep each other lifted in words of encouragement and prayer. For those who are going through a call or text message or a visit, even a card in the mail, can make such a world of difference. Amen. There is one amendment as I'm sitting here thinking to myself, um, I certainly thank God for our deaconess who are here, and I don't want them to walk no further than necessary. So as opposed to us meeting in the fellowship hall, again, it won't be very long at all. Amen. If we could get everyone to just stay right over here in the area where our acolyte is at, um, we'll just gather together here. And that way you don't have to worry about transversing through the nave and chancel of our church. Amen. We'll be here, we'll get together, and after that, for those who are at home watching us, if you are one of our sick and shut-in, we will be there to commune with you this afternoon. Um, and until then, May we continue to live for God and be about God's will. Amen. 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 Only wise God, with glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore, let us all sing together.